Rising out of the clouds is the island of Timor-Leste. 640 kilometres off the northwest coast of Australia, it is one of the newest nations on Earth. Comparatively young in geological terms, around one million people live in this land of great natural beauty. The capital city of Dili is a mixture of its colonial past, invasion and civil unrest. The picturesque waterfront is a hive of activity where local fishermen sell the day's catch under the shade of banyan trees. For the team from the Monash Science Centre, Professor Pat Rich, Dr Corrie Williams, Jeff Smith and research student Dilla Prankumar, the trip to Dili is an opportunity to develop the science education at the nation's primary and secondary schools. In late 2008, the team with support from the Australian Government, US energy company ConocoPhillips and Monash University set up an exhibition of dinosaur fossils. Everybody is very curious to look at the, our uh, world history, how this uh, earth started and how it was, you know, millions of years ago. The star attraction is the Tarbosaurus, a close relative of the most famous of all dinosaurs, Tyrannosaurus rex. This particular specimen was found in the Gobi Desert, Mongolia. While the exhibit was successful, housed in a building at the former marketplace of Mikado Lama, an invitation from the president to move it to the foyer of the newly completed presidential building was an offer too good to refuse. But taking apart a collection of over 5,000 pieces and reassembling it in a few days is a big task. Dr Corrie Williams, a veteran of many an exhibition, briefs the team on what needs to be done. All the ones on the wall, they're all pretty clean, but they'll just need, with the acrylic cleaner going over, and you just have to be careful near the edges that it doesn't bleed under the edges. Uh, okay. uh, by the end of today, what I'd like is these cases are all empty, yeah. and the small specimens are packed up. Yeah. Tomorrow, we won't do the tarbosaur until tomorrow. And so the unscrewing, wrapping, cleaning and packing begins. A project like this requires teamwork and cooperation from a number of organisations. And while the Australian Defence Force has an important peacekeeping role in the region, transporting dinosaur fossils needed some military-like organisation. These fossils have to be handled extremely carefully but what the locals must have thought, seeing the head of the Tarbosaurus sitting in the front seat of an army truck, is anyone's guess. A short trip through the streets of Dili and the fossils arrive at their new home. The Defence Force's job is done and now the work begins. Dismantling the fossils was easy compared to the job that lay ahead of the team. Assembling that many pieces requires care, patience and organisation. If you can imagine trying to piece together a huge Lego set, but sometimes things don't always go to plan. What's happened is the spine's like this, and the other one is slightly at an angle like this. So you pull that one off, and then, because I'm, yeah. I'm guessing that neither will move. Yeah. Can you push up at all? Uh, like that? Yeah. <laughs> I got to love that. As dusk settled on the exhibition's new home, a hot and tired team decided to spend the next day taking in some of the wonderful Timorese culture. 50 kilometres west of Dili is Malbara, a fort town built in the 17th century. The original cannons still point out to the sea they once defended. The market is the centrepiece of the town and it is full of life and colour and music. While statistics paint a gloomy picture of one of the poorest countries in the world, the happy nature of the Timorese, and especially the children, is infectious. From the delights of Marlborough, it's back to Dili to experience culture of a different kind. While it is a bloody and brutal sport, cockfighting is an integral part of the male Timorese culture. It attracts large crowds and even larger sums of money. The average wage is around 1,000 US dollars a year, but that kind of money can be won in an afternoon. There was one more event to round off the day, 
and this was something less confronting, horse racing. The glamour of the Melbourne Spring Carnival has nothing on the setting and atmosphere of the Dilly Turf Club. No fancy saddles, colourful silks or well-planned race strategies. Just jump on the horse and ride as hard as you can. And if you get a bit tired, well, just get off and walk. And of course, staying on the racetrack is optional. The main event of the day featured the thoroughbreds of the President, Jose Ramos Horta, and the Prime Minister, Shinana Guzmao. A great race, a photo finish, and you guessed it, the President's horse first, the Prime Minister's second. A day and a trophy to remember. The next day, a sneak peek is given to those who contributed so much in helping to get the exhibition up and running. The commander of the International Stabilisation Force, Brigadier Bill Sowry, is welcomed by the President, who arrived in his favourite piece of transport, a restored ex-US Army Jeep. The Timor-Leste government has provided funds for the maintenance of the exhibition and the need for guides has meant employment for locals in a country still rebuilding a damaged economy. And a local organisation, the Alola Foundation, has provided teachers and material so that school children can visit the exhibition. The exhibition opens people's eyes to what they don't know exists here. The island of Timor is only something very recent has only been up here maybe six million years or less. It's not been here forever. And so by putting these exhibitions on, or an exhibition like this on, with lots of rocks from all over Timor, as well as some things from neighbouring Australia, it gives them an idea of how their island has come to be. Australian Defence Force personnel were only too willing to join in the fun as the kids made dinosaur masks, while the exhibition attracted attention from the local TV station. The reconstruction of Timor-Leste is going to take time and hard work and the government is focusing heavily on rebuilding the country's damaged education infrastructure. So exhibitions such as these are crucial in driving the nation's development. We have built over a thousand schools, expanded university, there have been many technical vocational institutes in place, although all of them uh, precarious, you know, uh, not terribly great quality because of lack of teachers. Uh, and because the people are just uh, hungry for the study, uh, the school enrollment just explodes. Classrooms cannot contain all the students, although we have built so many over the years. And some, many, still in very precarious conditions. But uh, all of this tells, you know, the hunger of people. You know, I have, I, I must say, I've never been to a country where there is such hunger to study. The town of Ailu is 50 kilometres to the south of Dili, but the drive that winds its way through the highlands on some rough and ready roads can take over two hours. Corrie and Jeff have volunteered to set up a smaller companion exhibition, but have only a day in which to complete the job. Ailu was an important base during the nation's struggle for independence, but today it is quiet, with most of the activity taking place at the community centre. Back in Dili, the main exhibition was nearing completion, and the Tarbosaurus under lights had an eerie quality, until... That seemed a good time to call it a day and prepare for tomorrow. With the major work completed, all that was left to do was add the finishing touches. Putting up posters and adding these decorative ties, a form of traditional weaving that is an important part of the local culture. One of the most wonderful things I saw the other day was one of the guards in full gear with all the nightsticks, etc., standing there repeating what was one in, in Tetum, one, what was on one of our, our panels. And then I asked him a couple of questions with hands and he had understood what was on that panel. Maybe at a very basic level, but he had understood, so... And they're interested. That's the thing that's lovely to see. They, they're interested enough to stop and do that. 